Hello. Hey everyone. Hello. Hey, Transplantings. Hi, Moniqua09. Hey, guys. Is it Tuesday today? Yeah, happy Tuesday. Or Wednesday, wherever you are. Okay. Um, so, yes. Oh, yeah. Hi, Musical Plant Girl. Yes, yeah, so you finally caught me live. Actually, today is just a spontaneous live because I thought of doing something today. Um, leading up to today, actually, I was gathering materials um, because I've always had this in mind. You love my ferns. What are the upside down ones? Says Daddy Long Leaves. Those are called Hooperzias, if you're referring to the plants here. Um, so yeah, going back, I was saying that leading up to today, I was sort of gathering materials because I've always wanted to do a carnivorous plant terrarium. And I went to my local stores, Michael's for example, for those who don't live in California, I'm not sure if there's Michael's everywhere else, but Michael's is like a craft store and they currently have 50% off on a lot of their things, the spring ones, and I got a terrarium. This one's originally $20, but it's half off, so I got it for just 10 plus sales tax. Um, so this one is a good size terrarium. Concrete base with those felt thingies at the bottom so it wouldn't scratch your surface. And I've always had some, I think these are Mexican butterworts or pinkulas. And as you can see, excuse the gnats, but this is actually outside, thriving outside and as you can see, it's just loving it. It's currently on several layers of, yes, a bog garden, exactly. Swamp plants, um, correct. That's from Janice G75. Um, oh, wow. Well, okay, I'm just trying to, trying this feature out. Well, thank you, musical plant girl. Um, so I would, I would, oh, oh my God, a gnat is still moving or no, yeah. Anyways, I was saying that uh, my Mexican butterwort is doing so well outside. It's hidden under a shelf. And if you could see, it's blooming right now. Uh, how do the beauty bloggers do this? How do I cover the lights? And I thought that it would really look cute inside my new terrarium. But I'm not going to put everything because a part of me wants to make sure that they will thrive. And... If you were watching my stories over the weekend, we went to University of California, Berkeley Botanical Gardens, and I, they have a good, really good selection of affordable carnivorous plants, and I got some. I actually got three plants. I'll show you my haul from last weekend. So this one is actually called a Drosera spatulata. If I'm not mistaken, I got this for $10, and... I would, as you can see, there are tiny, beautiful, carnivorous flowers. Gnats are the bane of plant lovers' existence, says Daddy Longleaves. And that is right. Um, fortunately, at this point, um, I kind of learned how to deal with gnats. I'm also an overwaterer, so gnats would naturally thrive in my environment, just considering um, overwatering. But... Um, through the years, I've learned how to change my substrate. So a lot of my plants in the back are in inorganic mediums called Lechuza Pond. I'll show you that. I have several videos about pond on my YouTube channel. If you are guys are not aware, you could click the link in my bio. And what I also did to adjust is, of course, I tried to really stop the urge uh, um, of watering my plants, but I had to change my substrates. Those that are still in soil, I really had to make them super fast draining so that water would not retain. Gnats love my... Actually, my, my office plants live with gnats. And 
that's why I try my best not to water them as often so that they would die on their own and yeah waiting for the mosquito dunks to work yeah um we haven't really tried to deal with our office fungus gnats but i think they're trying they're dying on their own these days because um the soil dries faster these days so they won't thrive unlike when we transition from winter to spring and um another trip tip tip that i I, I did or applied on my own per plant journey to get rid of gnats is well uh, when I changed my substrate I had to adjust it to someone like me who overwaters. if I tend to water often then the substrate that f tends to like flow through the actual plant would be better and that really helped solve my gnat problems also you could try inorganic medium others are trying passive hydro or semi hydro and that um, if you're familiar with hydrotons or LECA, those are really good examples. What else? People always use the yellow sticky traps. Uh, up until now, I always have them readily available. I've also used um, substances like, um, well, I haven't used mosquito bits, but they are more readily available and affordable as well. Those are proven to work. Um, I tried putting sand on top of my soil, but because my soil originally was just too soggy or like um moisture holding it didn't do a lot i mean it didn't really make a lot of difference and then another thing you could do is of course um a, i i mean going back substances i also use natural so it's like a powdery similar to probably mosquito bits but this one i always mix with my watering my water for the week actually and it has the same um, good bacteria that are in mosquito bits um, that would help kill the um, the eggs or the um, not so adult fungus gnats. So those also tried. Oh yes, as per Google, I've also heard that musical plant girl use cinnamon, but because I have cats, I'm just a afraid of trying some condiments they might be sensitive to that your philodendron sub has tatum became a victim of the yellow stick traps oh my speaking of that because you see my philodendron oh no this is an anthurium polydiflorum it was actually a victim of my yellow sticky traps i fortunately that older leaf already dropped but i was so excited to see a large leaf and then i accidentally hit the yellow sticky trap on that new leaf and it damaged it so it was me technically because of the yellow sticky trap so i'm not really a fan of using those anymore i would my initiative would always just go towards amending the soil so that even if you're an overwater or underwater you would adjust to that and making the medium not co um convenient or not con uh, the right environment for these nets um to thrive is very important <laughs> oh my god plus yes if i also have pets i think one of my cats also almost got caught in one of those yellow sticky traps so um i'm not really a fan of using that so let me just start talking about what i want to do so i'm just eyeballing everything because technically this one i would consider is an effect uh, a successful bog setup um, which I just tried by doing layers of LECA and then I didn't have any smaller substrate so I did use Lechuza Pond um, which are sig um, similar to like pebbles this topmost layer is the existing medium of the ping or the butter word I think these are still considered butter words um so it worked for a while all i did was to make sure that there is water and never let them dry out and put them in bright indirect light and they could even tolerate a lot of um direct sunlight because that's another thing that i've learned recently that is to give my carnivorous plants the most light even at full sun they could um thrive on those um i also got some moss which are free from my the pot of my ripsalis plant and because i don't really water my ripsalis often i think this moss would thrive even better in a soggier environment and then 
I would also use some smaller Leka. So this one was from a previous pot that I had um, a, a Hoya on. So what I'm gonna do is I wanted to make this the one of the layers. I have some leftover horticultural charcoal to help with the drainage and also just soaking up all the impurities in whatever substrate I have. I'll plant some, not a lot of these Drosera spatulata. I also have this bigger Drosera, which is Drosera capensis. And this one is like very dewy, you know, the signature sundew um, look. I think I'll just pluck some smaller plants because I, in the first place, I don't have a lot of space to plant in this terrarium. And then when we're done, I would water it with some mineral water. So that's another thing that I also learned um, um, based on experience that carnivorous plants, most of our tap water is too hard for them. So you have to make sure that they're at least purified or goes through some form of distillation process, if that even makes sense. So I'm kind of nearsighted. So I'm just trying to read your comments. Um, thank you, Daddy Longleaves, um, for watching that episode with Jimmy. Um, he has uploaded a few more episodes. So I guess uh, let us start doing this. Um, another thing that I've learned through the years is actually reading materials. Um, I'm not really someone who goes into like deep research on like books but I like reading available materials and actually watching videos on YouTube. A good friend of mine, um, her username is DB Terrariums, that's her business profile and Patricia is um, who is the author of Terrarium Guide at Terrarium Guide. Oh hi Plant Bay, hi Kay. Um, we're gonna get ready for our episode on Thursday. <laughs> I probably would have to ask these guys what they want to talk about because at this point we're not sure yet what we're going to talk about on Thursday. So yes, I was telling people that um, I've learned a lot because I got one of Pat a copy of Patricia's books. It's really helpful and even if just by following Patricia and not reading the materials alone are already a great help. And she also answers a lot of my questions because I don't know a lot of about terrariums and carnivorous plants. And those things are very much visually appealing to me. That's why I tend to do it. I'm kind of like someone who gets attracted to something visually and then I'll try to recreate it. And then as I go along, I try to learn the process and the logic behind those. So I guess it's a Pisces kind of thing, just trying to be creative and go with the flow like a real fish. <laughs> so um, there are some debris on my terrarium but I'm not so worried because this is literally a bog terrarium that I'm trying to make so I'm not gonna obsess about cleanliness. Um, I also got some of these cute <laughs> um, tools from Michaels. Um, this one Patricia sent me so might as well use that. So what I'm going to do first is adding the bottommost layer of my bog terrarium or my swamp terrarium, however we're going to name this. And because this glass enclosure has a little bit of a dip, I feel like it's perfect because it'll house the layers and not exposing the charcoal when you look at it from the outside. And then I think after my um, charcoal, 100% Pisces, that's right. I would do my left or add some more of my leftover Leka because I wanted to um, probably like separate the layer of, I have decorative rocks, which I got also got on sale. So, Technically, don't take my instructions like a golden rule. I'm just eyeballing everything and just like just getting trying to get the feel of it. So I'm just trying to create um, a drainage layer, but not well, because this is a swamp or bog terrarium. I don't think it's quite necessary, but I feel like um, you, at somehow you have to raise the plants from the actual 
um, bottom of your container so that it they will have some breathing space I guess um, next moving on from a coarse leca layer I would like to add a layer of lechuza pond so this is what we have so far this is just my leftover horticultural charcoal um, hey hey mocha queen of quite a lot or mock mock a queen of quite a lot um hey a couple of plants yeah you love my shirt it's from boys with plants um, I bought it a couple of years ago um, so after that oh let me just increase the brightness of my phone um, can't see so after the leka, I would like to add a little bit of the pond just to add some more. Or I'd like to slowly um, do a gradient layering actually. So I'm just trying to put a lot of those on the sides so that it'll also look cute when you look at it from the sides. Oh my gosh, I think it's so high now. And I'll show you what we have so far. So just a little bit of the pine. So now you can't even see that there's leka inside. So that probably defeated the purpose of it. And then I probably forgot to mention that I also got these decorative rocks. So Michael's has plastic ones that look like rocks. But of course, I, I'm trying to go for the real thing because I was envisioning my plants to sit on top of these crevices. My Patricia, along with my friend Kay, Plant Bay, also uses lava rocks. I've tried lava rocks with one of my um, carnivorous plant setup, which is made up of a Saracenia and an Epenthes or a pitcher plant. And they seem to be like loving the indirect soaking up of the moisture. Miss Bay, I'm not snatch for the gods. It's just a filter, really. Let me adjust the lighting. Can you guys see? Okay, this is probably better. Um, but you probably need to see a little bit of my face so I could explain. And then, so yeah, I was saying that you're ju I'm just going to position this. Well, this one has to face me. Um, I probably use this so that plants could sit on top of the tiny crevices and I wanted to make like a tiny landscape situation um, I don't know if I should stick with this layer already or maybe do a layer of my cocoa peat or peat moss I think this is some cocoa peat or cocoa coir um, I think I'll just put a little bit of cocoa coir before I arrange my my stones or rocks to sit on this layer just also to cement our structure. So this one is from I think I got this from Amazon. I bought self-watering planters and they of course the medium of choice usually for most manufacturers are um, cocoa coir and I saved some of these Yes, Coco Coir. Um, I saved some of these specifically for terrariums, and that's also one thing that I learned from Patricia's books. She uses Coco Coir for sphagnum or moss terrariums, and so far, two of my moss terrariums are still alive because I use Coco Coir instead of a soggy soil mixture or substrate in it. And yep, um, learned it through experience because my previous terrariums weren't really living with, I mean, didn't live because of the heavier substrate. So I'm just trying to level it a little bit so that we get a, a good um, compact substrate. So this is what we have so far. Not really looking the cutest, but it should serve its function. Now what I'm trying to do is put this I think this, yeah, this one is the side that I wanted. This in front. And then the other one, because... Oh, thank you. Miss Bay says my bio orb is amazing. This one is... Has more crevices on the sides. I wanted to keep this standing a little bit. 
So maybe I'll have this facing this side. Maybe I could let it, let me see how it looks from my perspective. So I think this one would work already. Um, what I learned watching terrarium videos on YouTube is like, well, technically, if this is aquascaping, this is referred to like, uh, this is referred to as the hardscape um, when you try to position your plant, I mean, your rocks, rather. So I just wanted to add some more cocoa coir because I feel like I would be able to squeeze in some more plants on the crevices if I have more medium to work with because I'm planning on just using my um, what do you call these pinchers to extract my plants so I won't really get their original a lot I won't really get a lot of their original substrate so let me just add some more and we'll add later on as we go sabes espanol un poco yes i also watch serpa design he's so cool and his creations are amazing it's very inspiring so bella sense says your t-shirt with a heart eyes emoji from rocks in the wild oh the rocks i didn't <laughs> janice g was saying that you could get rocks in the wild yes you could also do that you can get Roxy's for all that aquarium stores. Exactly. Um, I actually live nearby the sea. Why didn't I think of that? I guess it's just more convenient to get it from the stores. And I like the color of the rocks specifically. Boenoitkel. Good evening. Hello. Oh, hi from Argentina. Que lindas plantas. Te veo desde Argentina. Okay. Hmm. Huh. Thank you for your interaction. I really appreciate it. I just wanted this to be a hangout, you know, like I would probably have, I mean, this would have been better if I pre-filmed everything, but I just wanted this to be a spontaneous kind of content where I interact while you guys are watching me. Um, now, I am thinking, of course, we're going to put the moss last. I'm just checking something if I forgot it. Oh, I made my own homemade milk tea, by the way. Hi, Jean's favorite things. Hello, Ganda. Okay, so I'm sorry, guys. I mean, I, I do a little bit, I do understand a little bit of Portuguese and Spanish, but I can't speak fluently. So I'll try to speak in English. So that it's um, going to be a universal kind of content. Now, um, when I'm in this stage of creating something, I would try to envision if, like as much as possible, I wanted to get this one. This one that has a little bit of the flower. Um, actually, I need to cut a little bit of the dried stems. I'm not sure if I, I, sh I know I'm supposed to do this, to clean this up. You know, you, you don't want the debris to stay in your arrangement, but in nature, really, they just fall off and decompose on the side of the plants. But if you're going to put it in a terrarium setting, I don't think it's going to be a good idea to leave the dead parts. Hello from Alaska. I wonder what time it is there. You're, I think, three hours behind California, if not. Is there any difference between brands of Lekka? I personally, I think I've just tried two. One that I always order from Amazon and this smaller one that I used earlier that I got from the pet store because it's made for reptiles actually. So let me try using this curved thing. Um, I'm thinking of getting this one because I would like for this to have its own spot here i'm also just picking out the dead leaves um let me see i think i would want to keep something here okay 
I think it's best for me to put a little bit of cocoa coir so that it, ha it has something to cling on underneath. And cocoa coir stay tends to stay very moist. So, okay. Oh, I'm sorry that uh, you have to use Google Translate. Yes, exactly, Janice G. Um, you wouldn't want to keep dead parts unless you'd have springtails or isopods. And this one is an open setup, so as much as possible, I don't want to use beneficial bugs in this. And Daddy Longleaf says, um, can we just recognize that ama how amazing your succulents or cacti pots are or just your pots in general? Thank you so much. Um, I also, other than collecting plants, I also find joy in finding the right pair or finding the right accessories for my plants so i like for me it's like a, a an overall curation kind of thing and i'm glad that you guys appreciate that too okay and then let's see i wanted to get this um, i think this is a called a Mexican butterwort and I wanted to put it here so they're so easy to pluck I'm just gonna make sure because I believe that their root systems are quite shallow that's why they really thrive and we're gonna get rid of all the dead debris at the bottom and I could see fresh white roots And I'm just gonna put it here. I have to make a tiny hole because, because the way that it is, it might not stick, but it also might stick. And this is what we have so far. I just wanna show you guys. <laughs> it's mostly relying on gravity to stay on, but isn't it cute for it to stay there? My purpose is has to stay there so that it can easily attract any gnat or insect because I plan on, ke on keeping this beside the sliding door and I think that let me just move this so I'm gonna keep the rest um, because they seem to be happy outside anyways but I might I was thinking of moving the other one but looks happy there so never mind come to think of it like what i've mentioned um it's mostly relying on gravity right now if you could see the back side so i think just to keep it safe i will put some more cocoa coir in the back so that it just pushes it somewhere you know i mean i'm someone who would most of the time consider the consider the possibilities but a lot of times i just let gravity do its thing but not this time because it might uproot our butterwort and i won't even notice it because it'll probably be covered in liquid or you know water so i'm making a mess but I think that should be enough to support it through time. I think it'll fall some more sideways, but I'm not so worried anymore compared to what we had earlier. <laughs> okay, so this is what we have so far. Technically just one plant really, but I'm just gonna try to make this simple because um, the good thing that I learned about carnivorous plants is they don't grow big super fast so you could really keep them in nicer um, setups without compromising your <laughs> happy accident without compromising your aesthetics you know you do have spiders that help exactly uh, my um, plants that are outside definitely benefit from the garden spiders and they keep the pest situation in control now let me just put this facing me um 
let's see I this is not really meant to be used this way but I'll just push that cocoa coir a little bit because I don't like working with a dirty terrarium later on you could still spray water to keep everything in control and then I also wanted to add a little bit of the Drosera spatulata but it's my first time working with them so we'll see I think I'll get one or this one which is smaller and see how it does okay that wasn't so hard to extract um I wanted to keep it here on this side but again I need to probably um, stick some of its original substrate in here. Actually, I'm just going to get a little bit of this gooey soil thingy on the side. Just so it has some medium to stick on. And this is how it looks. And then we're gonna stick it here I don't know if I'm doing this right but we'll see as soon as I notice that the plants are declining I should just probably throw it back in the same pot <laughs> but hopefully it'll thrive and stick here and stay here oh, I need to roll this long root on this side to keep it intact I'm just gonna use my hands oops I'm not sure if I should be doing this but it gives me more control and here's what we have so far and it does look like this thingy already fell that side okay <laughs> hi you Izumi thank you you love my shirt I think this is designed by an artist for boys with plants so this is what we have so far and I think I could insert somewhere underneath but let's stick to that because it's kind of a challenge or actually now that I see a better position for this to be in I might do another one underneath let me see So have you guys tried or do you have carnivorous plants because the story polls, polls that I've been posting a few days ago, not a lot of people have them but a lot of us are really interested in having some. So I wanted to know, for those that are watching the live right now, I wanted to know if it's something that you already have or you're open to trying because definitely it's something that i'm quite interested in um i think i could add some more but what i'm gonna do so far is add one of these drosera capensis i really want this one with a boom actually Oops, I think I unplugged it so harsh. Just cut the dried parts. I think most of this part is dead, but it's the happiest, to be honest. Yep, this one is the dead part. Let me just cut it. And let's pot this up here. just doing arrangements be it succulents or this one which is something new to me it's just so relaxing when I try to create or recreate rather um, scenes from nature and seeing things or plants at the botanical garden um, you had a pitcher plant was doing great then started hating me gave it a new home which is either the trash can or outside daddy long leaves <laughs> just stick the moss in the crevices correct um, that's what i'm gonna do later on 
I'll do the moss last because I always like to finish um, be the predator not the prey <laughs> actually fortunately that small pitcher plant that I placed in a terrarium so far it's doing well primarily because it's not exposed to outside factors but it's probably starving right now because it doesn't have any bugs to eat inside the glass um so i don't think this drosera is very healthy but it does have a bloom but the leaves of this one are dry and dead that's why i probably need to add one more that looks healthier because this one is more lush to be honest i'll get the one the neighboring one So this one looks healthier. Definitely looks healthier. And I love that there's a little bit of moss in there. I know. Crickets might work. No. Well, I agree. Pests are always um, a frustrating situation to deal with. But honestly, after a few years of collecting plants i'm not even bothered anymore by the presence of a lot of pests i mean mealies don't give me heart attacks anymore they're just like oh mealies let's deal with them um if you survive good if you don't oh well you know um i think it's also part of aging at, in your plant journey <laughs> if you kind of like get over it you're gonna get over it as you um, kind of get used to the normal things that you go through in plant collecting Okay um, This is what we only have so far. I have a lot of moss though that will make this cute mm. I'm thinking of adding one more in between Here We'll see if this Mexican butterwort will will bloom here just like the others because most of the plants i have have already bloomed outside of course I, outside is ideal um, so i'm going to get this one next and put it in the middle looks like a tiny octopus without a bloom hmm how many minutes have we oh that reminds me I forgot I found a dead succulent today I need to toss that white stuff all over it so maybe me leave bugs I'm actually outside so is this my first trial of a carnivorous plants or do you have yeah I do have a f several a few of them like other than this i have two saracenias now i also have um oh well, actually i have i forgot the name of the other one but like a smaller pitcher plant and then i also have um the nepenthes um, i only killed my venus flytrap but the rest of the carnivorous plants that i tried are still alive fortunately so this is what we have so far not so fancy nothing really groundbreaking but i think this will do for now i have to clean it up and add the best part in my opinion finishing touches which is moss or now that i'm thinking that the middle part if you see like i mean i don't mind this one but i think it's better to have something flatter and something that will stay lower um, like this um, Drosera spatulata here instead of something that grows upwards like I forgot the idea of this one I keep on saying Mexican butterwort but it might be right um, so yeah I think I'll just move it somewhere hmm. I didn't want to but I have to move you because I want you to look cute in the middle here we go and I think this one will just have to move here somewhere. And then I'll have to do a lot of 
maintenance for this one to thrive because I would want to have a lot of moss growing on the sides. Okay, I need to add some more cocoa coir on this side because this one will stay on this corner. Hi Rachel, thank you. This shirt is from Boys With Plants actually. You, Janice G says she found some glass jars at the thrift store. You are giving me inspiration. Girl, I was just telling my co-worker earlier that I miss thrifting because I always find good glass containers at the thrift store. And the primarily like probably 50% of my terrariums are thrifted if not something that I got from a clearance rack or um, the sales section because I would like to I mean glass for me is something that you could really go for a sustainable route I mean it doesn't the quality doesn't diminish or you don't really need new glass containers unless you're aiming for an, a very unique shape that's not available but like these ones if I could thrift terrariums and the thrift stores are kind of um what's the right term replenished i think people went crazy when they reopened um that would have given me a lot of opportunity to find some more sustainable or to find more sustainably sourced glass rather can i put a weed plant in it like literally just a weed yeah ratio loves thrifting i also love thrifting we don't have a lot of thrift stores in my area that has good finds though so um but i love watching thrifting videos on youtube it's just so addictive i guess so this is what we have so far i think you guys would agree that this one looks better now we're keeping all the taller ones the tall drosera here the flatter ones in the middle so that they could just put out all their tiny flowers hopefully this sickly drosera that's about to bloom will stay blooming and the greener mexican butterworts i'm not sure are better on the top side and on this corner and then i think it's time for me to start planting the moss i'm not even sure if these will thrive in a bog setup but they will make the thingy look cute for now like moss just finishes anything that's why i love moss a lot i hope i harvested enough i am kind of hopeful that it will also thrive and spread but i hope that i got enough for it to look finished yes hmm. okay Yes, thrift is great. Let me read some comments because I'm kind of just talking and talking. You can bonsai a weed plant in it. <laughs> Actually, I have some weed growing in some sphagnum moss right now, but it just gets super tall. Um, How do I say your username? Mocha queen of quite a lot. Yes, thrift is great. I'm a determined browser. <laughs> I need to know what carnivorous plants that are flat um the pinkulas if i'm saying that right um do stay flat and they have broad leaves uh, also an episode on legends okay can carnivorous <laughs> okay never mind do i like dragons what dra which dragons are you referring to thank you spokane plant mama she says this is so pretty um, okay, yeah, Janice answered that they don't know meat. Um, carnivorous just pertaining to insects. Uh, they like to eat insects. Aloha from Hawaii, or I think Bretman said Hawaii, um, from Sandy Kinoshita. <laughs> Janice, that's so cute. As a kid, I gave my Venus flytrap a piece of ham and it rotted. Ooh. <laughs> 
Oh, you're right, Daddy Long Leaves. Um, I actually stopped reading his comment because I think he was pertaining to something else. Oh my gosh, psych kills, stop. <laughs> okay, let me continue with the moss action before we lead to something not plant related. Um, so yeah, because I just harvested these, they have a lot of debris, including some dead stems of my ripsalis. Oh, don't mind my kitty. She's just meowing because it's time for us to play and be cutesy cutesy usually at this time of the day. Okay, let me also add this one in between. Also one here. Okay, I don't know what type of moss this is, um, but it's really cute. It's not a pishin, uh, not a pincushion moss. I could further divide this. Yes, monsoon. We're gonna play later, but let me just finish this and show them the finished product. Cause we've been going on and on for a while now. And this is how I'm usually just distracted by everything. Like my cats, or something comes up and I just completely get distracted. It's a Pisces thing, or it's just me. Hmm. Yeah, my kitty. She is the clingiest among my three kitties, actually. Um. So this is what we have so far. I'm just trying to brush off. So I'm halfway done the moss situation. No, it does look kind of tropical, but because the moss are just so fluffy from outside, you know, but um, I should be able to. This one is slimmer. So this could go here and cover up this bald spot. Make sure to tuck them near your substrate so they actually experience a little bit of that water because these are live moss. Um, although they don't have strong root systems like the rest of the plants, but you still want to give them ideal conditions. Oops, I think I placed that the other way. There we go. Can you guys see that side? So this is the high side, which is supposed to be the back side of my um, arrangement. And just a little bit more. And this is the last one that I have, so I guess we're gonna be done with this. Okay, I'm out of moss. I do have some existing moss on my actual bogs, but this is our finished product. I will just dust this a little bit. Um, actually, uh, you could use a spray bottle, the one with a pointed tip, so that you'll have a controlled stream of your water. And then just push your moss on the corner to make sure that it actually comes in contact with your substrate. It doesn't have a root system, but I would want it to have some access to the water so that it keeps on thriving. I'm just brushing the rocks. So see, I haven't really filled this part, if you could see it, guys. I would probably go back to that later on, but Thank you. Oh, um, the kitty is gone. She peaced out already. I can't find her. So yeah, this is our finished product. Um, I just wanted to thank you guys for... <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. Um, aware 420. I missed a spot. That's right. I probably... I have to get some more Coco Coir because I'm out of it. Um, and squeeze some in there to also keep the rock uh in place so this is what we have so far 
captures three types of carnivorous plants. Um, I have to put it beside a, a bright shelf, which I have a big ass shelf that covers the sliding door. And actually, I always finish with some water. This might be messy or I, I probably am doing it wrong, but I'd rather. But yeah, what I'll do later on is I will bog this up or swamp this up rather with more water. And then at times, if I feel like the moss is not thriving, um, I might need to cover this just to give this a little bit of um, humidity. But I think I definitely have to keep this open so that my the plants inside would... So I'm just trying to prevent on hitting the actual, the flatter droseras because um, I, I didn't get a lot of medium with it. So it's mainly just a little bit of moss and soil and a lot of roots. So I don't know if it'll thrive that way, but we'll see. I have to add some more water. I don't think this was enough because it's quite deep. But that's it. Yes, and sick polar bear, I made a terrarium. Um, <laughs> no, Daddy Long Leaves, um, Serpa, Sherpa or Serpa design is on a different level. I'm just a beginner. I'm just trying it out. I'm. He's really very technical and scientific and knows his plants really well. I don't even know a lot of the carnivorous plants. But the point is, I just want to have fun and try this for myself. Um, and it's perfect for Terrarium Tuesday, Pink Plant Wednesday as well. And yes, this is our finished product. And hopefully, I should probably update you guys after a few weeks to see if it's been thriving. I hope the moss will thrive, but I definitely have to keep on watering these this setup or terrarium these days because it gets super hot. So yes, um, thank you for for tuning in and um, thank you for getting badges. This is something that I was trying earlier. So thank you, Daddy Long Leaves and Musical Plant Girl. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> um, thank you. Have a great day guys and enjoy the rest of your evening or your morning wherever you are um i think i'll save this instagram live the nats have a new home yes they have a prime real estate over here they could occupy this one instead of the of my normal plans um take care guys bye